So last time we looked at some of the properties of platonic solids and we noticed some patterns. We noticed that some of the platonic solids had the same number of edges and that the number of vertices of one solid matched the number of faces of another and vice versa. And whenever this phenomenon occurred, we said that these shapes were dual. So we said that these shapes were dual. That is, if any two platonic solids shared these particular properties, then they were dual. In particular, we noticed that the tetrahedron was self-dual, that the cube and the octahedron were dual, and that the dodecahedron and the icosahedron were also dual. So they come in these nice little pairs, apart from the tetrahedron. So in this video, I'd like to tell you exactly how we construct a dual platonic solid. So let's have a definition, or rather a method. It's more a method. So given the platonic solid P, so given a platonic solid P. If we connect the midpoints of adjacent faces, so if we connect the midpoints of adjacent faces, faces with new edges, then these midpoints become the vertices of a new solid. So then these midpoints become the vertices of a new solid. Of a new solid. And we call this solid the dual platonic solid. So the dual platonic solid and we denote this by p star so p star is the dual of p and this shares the nice little property that if i take the dual of something twice um, i get back my original platonic solid so in other words uh said differently that says that p star star gets p so if i do the same process twice and i get back my p okay so this is much nicer to see with a picture so here's a, a nice little picture which very nicely shows the duality between the the cube and the octahedron so here you'll notice that the midpoint of each face of a cube becomes a vertex of the new dual platonic solid. In this case, the octahedron, which you can see in the interior of the cube. And we join these adjacent faces with new edges. So that's how we get the edges of the octahedron. So that's how we construct a dual platonic solid. And you can even reverse the process if you were to take the, you know, the midpoints of the octahedron and draw uh, new edges from the adjacent edges, adjacent sides, sorry. And you can do exactly the same thing with the dodecahedron and the icosahedron because those are also dual pairs. Now you might be wondering why this is important. Well, the fact that certain pairs are dual actually means that they have the same symmetry group or that their symmetry groups are isomorphic to each other. But in order to discuss these symmetry groups, I first need to introduce something called a group action, um, which I'll talk about in the next video.